Some people are thinking we're going to see really a blow off top moment, um, a melt up in the stock market before a crash. Other people are saying, no, we've already seen that and we're headed lower this year. We're headed for a crash this year. Your perspective on where we are right now. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I'm I'm not sure if I'm in the crash camp where we see like 30 or 40 percent downside in the stock market. What I do think is we will at least have a 20 percent correction in 2020, uh, 2022 maybe more. But again, if you think about it logically, right? So if you look at the stock market, and this is the chart of the S&P 500 of the spiders, and you can see we've been trading in this channel, right? So so basically going back, here's your COVID dip right here. All right. And, and what happened right around this time, the Federal Reserve comes out and says, hey, we are going to print and push $120 billion into the system every single month. That equates to $1.5 trillion a year. And in addition, we're going to keep interest rates at zero. And additionally, we're going to expand our balance sheet. And then the U.S. government is going to come out and print lots of money and send the Americans checks. Right. We're going to send all the Americans or at least the ones that qualify, you know, multiple checks. So, again, it does it make sense that we had this amazing kind of liquidity expansion that drove the S&P up? It absolutely does. Well, on that same front, you have to be able to be objective and say, OK, the Fed is now telling us that they're taking some of this away, all right? The government is now, you know, you're even seeing the inability for Biden to pass his Build Back Better plan. So that's not extra money going into the system. So you're seeing this situation where it's almost like a little bit of an unwind, and it only makes sense to me to see the stock market, which has been driven by that, unwind as well. So I'm in the camp that at some point, we, we very clear channel here, at some point we do break below the channel. And then I think again, my guess is your, your downside target for 2022 is this line right here, which was your pre-COVID high. And I would guess that again, we would trade down there. And that's, you know, I think that's around 20, maybe about 25% to the downside uh, from current levels here on the chart. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. So it does seem like, you know, quite still quite a big crash uh, based on what we've seen in the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, I do think so. I do think so. Um, you know, again, it's not going to be kind of the 2008, 2009, 65 percent drop. But I do think that, again, you know, especially if inflation is not going away and the Federal Reserve is being more forced to kind of take this stimulus away faster and faster. I do think that that's a good possibility. I also think that, you know, you're already seeing it in certain stocks. Like, I mean, it's been absolutely remarkable as a trader and and a swing trader to see some of the drops that we've seen on stocks. Like, I just got to show you guys some of these charts. So, I mean, some of these high flyers like like Cloudfare, you know, this stock was one of the biggest runners in most of 2021. And just in the last month, it's gone from two hundred and twenty five dollars down to one hundred dollars. I mean, that's an incredible reduction of of its its market cap and same thing with se here you had this one of this most amazing runs to the upside and then again it goes from 375 dollars to a low today of 180 in basically one month period so a lot of the market to me is already in a bear market um again you could go to other stocks too i mean we know what peloton right i mean peloton speaks for itself what that stock's done but so many i would say like 70 percent or maybe 60 to 70 percent of the stock market is already in a bear market and you're now seeing apple microsoft i mean the big players that make up 50 percent of the nasdaq 100 the s p 500 they're the only reason we haven't seen a bigger correction in the stock market so again i would say this the underlying factors in the stock market are very weak right now we're being carried up by a matter of a handful of stocks that cannot last So at some point, Apple, and we've even seen Microsoft recently start to take a little bit of a tumble. But if those stocks start to go, the S&P and the NASDAQ will see a big, big decline. Now, before I let you go, I did want to touch on the precious metal markets. Silver, what is your take on what is going to happen for silver? Yeah, so silver's a little trickier, right? Because you obviously have the metal exposure, which which as the money gets printed, gold should be moving up. But the one factor I'm just always a little concerned about is 
okay, well, if we see inflation going up, that's positive for silver. But what if the economy starts to slow? What if we get a situation where you have stagflation? And then the question is, how does the industrial side of silver handle that kind of slower economy? So, I mean, you know, that's always a question in my mind. It's one of the reasons why I'm having a harder time project silver's target for 2022 and 2023. But the one thing we can do is just quickly go to the charts here. And there are some levels for us to follow. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.